Okay, everybody, for our next session in the post-secondary and beyond. Business communication using ventriloquism and multimedia. And uh, I'd like to welcome Gary Green with JIBC. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great deal of pleasure to be here today to present uh, among all you esteemed colleagues. Uh, this is my first time facilitating an online course. I'm not here as a person that has formulated the course in the tech world. I'm a content provider. Now the question is, when you're doing post-secondary education and you're going out there on the online, and having been an online student myself, the important thing of an instructor is to mentor, motiv motivate, and inspire. And that's the role of an instructor, be it in the classroom or out of the classroom. So in my particular case, when I was asked to facilitate this course, I asked myself, how could I bring interactivity and bring the course alive? And we're so privileged to live in an age of technology that is so user-friendly that we have the tools. And in my development of an online business course, which entails public speaking, public speaking online, that's a challenge. But also, with the convergence of technologies, bringing back old methods that have been used since humans have first walked on the earth and sat around the campfire, that you can bring into the on-learning environment, and that is storytelling. The use of personal story. The use of ventriloquism. Puppets, age 60, I needed a new goal in life, so I started playing with dolls. And then I thought to myself, having been a policeman for 28 years and uh, teaching a lot of courses, I've met a lot of unique characters over the years that have inspired, that have motivated, and gave me cause to think. And I thought, well, how can I bring all this well of knowledge into online teaching? And so I came to the conclusion, through my ventriloquism, I could bring my characters and with my students do online role plays. And I'm so thankful to Tannis, Tracy, and um, Karen, and Stuart for allowing me to take a risk, step out of the crate. Now, the first thing I always do in online teaching is there is the readings, the textbook, but then I always like to do a multimedia narrative of the actual case. And I'd like to show you just an example here of uh, how I do a PowerPoint and not death by PowerPoint, but making it more of a personal story. Welcome to week four of Business Communications. This week we'll be looking at mastering oral communication skills. One of the greatest fears we have is presenting speeches in front of a live audience. In fact, some people fear this more than death. To be successful in communicating, it is important that we step out of our comfort zone and face the fear of public speaking. The anachronism for fear, after all, is false evidence appearing real. After watching the digital story stepping out of the crate, you will be encouraged to step out of your crate and discover the great communication potential that you have. This week's objectives are recognizing the four approaches to speaking, understanding nonverbal communication skills, follow the three steps of the listening process, and understand the four approaches to listening. Aggressive communicators dominate their audience. Okay, basically in there... Welcome what to week four of business communications. <laughs> this week we'll be looking at mastering answer. oral communication skills. One of the greatest... What I try to do in my multimedia presentations is I subscribe to Richard Meyer's um, modality of multimedia learning that it's easier to process two flows of information simultaneously and have a greater retention of knowledge. And that's through the visual and the auditory. So what I do with my PowerPoints is I look for iconic photographs that visually represent in an iconic form the precept I'm trying to teach, while at the same time giving the audio portion of the presentation that the student can then be uh, prepared for reading the chapter. Now, as instructors, we're all hammered out on that anvil of experience in our lives and we bring a lot to the podium. And the thing we have to realize is our personal stories. They are so valuable in teaching and bringing that experience to add realism to a course. So I mentioned stepping out of the crate. I use this as an example in all my communication classes to build esteem 
for people to take that step. Embrace so how are you today, Scully? Not too good, Gary. I don't feel good about myself. You don't feel good about yourself? No, I don't feel I'm good at anything I do. Oh, come on, Scully. you got to be good at something. Well, I don't think so, Gary. I don't think I'm good at anything. Everybody's good for something. You've got a skill, you just got to find it. Well, I don't know. I've tried several things, and I just seem to always mess them up. And I just don't feel good about myself, Gary. Well, anyway, I'm going to tell you a story. A story? Yes. I'm going to tell you about my dog, Reba. Your dog, Reba? Yes, I'm call it Stepping Out of the Crate. Well, that's an interesting title. Well, this dog, Reba, was a rescue dog. We got her from Nevada. And in Nevada as a pup, she'd really been treated mean. In fact, she was so scared when we got her, she would only stay in her crate. She wouldn't get out of the crate, and she stayed in there and was scared to come out. Oh, gee, that's terrible. Well, it is terrible. But, you know, eventually Reba left her crate, and she started to explore the house, and she started to befriend me. Oh, that's nice. She learned the first thing, trust. She trusted me. And trust is very important in a relationship. Yeah, I know that is. And it took a lot of courage for her to step out of that crate and try to get to know me. Oh, gee, that's really something. Then when I started taking Reba out and started throwing the Frisbee, and man, she could just cut the air like you never seen before. Well, I understand Order Collies are good at Frisbee catching. Well, this dog was just phenomenal. You'd toss that Frisbee in the air and she'd catch it with the greatest of ease. It was poetry in motion. Then we were near the water at a lake, and all of a sudden she jumped in the lake and just swam. So, that gives so how you are you today, Scully? Not too good, Gary. I don't feel... Sorry. That gives you an example of storytelling, and it gives you an example of relating a personal story. And it's through personal story that adds credibility as an instructor, I feel. Now, storytelling is as old as time itself and has been a great tool, so how can we bring that online? And that is by the use of very user-friendly technologies that are out there. And I use uh, Camtasia Studio 7, and I have a, a screencast site in which I put my clips. Now, they're independent of the Blackboard Online course because it allows me the flexibility to change, add clips, and to be up to date. I was even doing weekly video updates to my students and complimenting them on their work and how they were doing so I could have that personal outreach. Part of the communications course is they have to do an assessment to their communication and provide a video uh, clip of two minutes where they had to give a presentation with a video camera and we heard one of our students how frustrated he was by doing that. But that's the new world of business communication that we are not only delivering now to a live audience, we are delivering internationally, we're doing instruction, we're doing uh, all these sort of things. So if you're coming into the business world, you have to get comfortable in talking in front of a camera. So that really gives them that experience. But then we do role plays. Now role plays are very important in that when you have a role play, they can actually see an exchange and analyze it for good and bad communication techniques. So this example here is a customer relationship. Excuse me, sir, can I help you? Yes, sir, I'm looking for the manager of this store. Well, I'm the manager, sir, what can I do for you? Well, I got this digital camera here and it doesn't work and I think I should get my money back. Digital camera? Yes, sir. Well, I'm sorry, but uh, we'll see what we can do for you. Um, how long ago did you buy it? Oh, let me see. No, uh, yeah, I bought it over about 13 months ago. 13 months ago? Yeah, but I only used it the last couple of months. Eh? I let it sit for a while. I had to learn how to use the darn thing, you know. Being old and all that, I don't understand all this new technology and stuff. So 13 months. Well, I suppose you got the extended warranty. You got the extended warranty? What do you think I am? That's just another excuse to roll pennies from a quarter of attention that are like me, eh? No, sir, you should wreck your product and keep it on the warranty. Well, 13 months and you didn't get the extended warranty? No, I did not. Well, I'm sorry, we can't do anything to uh, repair your camera. What? What are you telling me? You can't fix my camera or get any of my money back? That's right. Well, that's a fine how do you do. I'm telling you, that's not very good, Lucky. Well, I'm sorry. I can't do anything. If you got the extended warranty, we could have given you a new camera. Oh, geez, you already get this going or going, don't you? Well, I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do. 
Well, I don't think that's very good at all. I tell you, I work harder to save my money to get something like this, to get myself a counter to go to the old country, eh? and this is the way you... So that's basically a role play that I put on course, and I do several of them, where they have to analyze the communication techniques that are taking place, is it aggressive, is it assertive, and then they have to do a report on it and then compare it to their own uh, style of communication. But also, uh, another example that I'd like to bring is diversity. Uh, I've done a lot of work. I was the Aboriginal Liaison Officer. I'm very honoured in the audience to have my boss, Kevin Worth, who uh, instituted a lot of changes in the diversity program in the Victoria City Police. And through that, I worked two years with Aboriginal people, and from the elders, I've garnered a lot of knowledge that I can bring into modern communication. So I'll just show you a short clip here of how I use the Aboriginal perspective of the power of the pause. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to introduce to you Simon Lodgepole, the wise storyteller. He's going to give us a presentation today on the power of silence and the pause in communication. So thank you, Simon, for coming today and presenting. You're welcome, Gary. I'm going to tell you a story. I was sitting on a bench looking out along the trees. It was quiet. And I was thinking and contemplating in silence, listening to the sounds of nature. A young fellow comes up to me and he says, I'm tired of all this noise. I need to hear some silence. I told him, sit down next to me. Close your eyes and listen. Well, he sat down next to me. He closed his eyes and he stood that way for about a minute. So basically, using the Aboriginal approach. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to introduce to you Simon Lodge. Uh, using the Aboriginal approach that we can learn much on listening skills. And that's one thing that's very much missing in our communication world today is the ability to listen. Because listening allows us an opportunity to understand, to connect, and I try to teach empathy. It's always important that we have an empathetic approach. So I think what's important and I find is with online teaching, I found this experience to be very rewarding. I've learned a lot and I'm seeing new directions that I have to go. But the important thing is no matter what, I think the most important criteria for an online instructor is to bring good content, to be available and always be there. I found that when I was taking online, it was very cold. I've heard people very lonely. And that was my one motivation to develop an online course is how can we make it that it's interactive, you feel part of the community, and you can bring in all the precepts that are required. So thank you very much for allowing this, and I really want to thank Tannis, and I want to thank uh, Karen, and I want to thank uh, Tracy and Stuart for allowing me to try a new thing in my life, because it's always risky to step out of the crate. Does anybody have a question? Yes. Well, Camtasia, I do all my online video clips, and then it has a plug-in for PowerPoint, so it'll record the PowerPoint, and then you can add the narration. Um, it's a very user-friendly program, and then with their screencast and with the students, they can open up a free site and get two gigabytes and upload, and it's not out into the world like YouTube. <laughs> You can have a control on, especially if they want to do personal things, and it's it's just a great program. So the question for the web audience: there was a um, little bit more information about Camtasia. Okay, make a difference one step at a time. Thank you. Great, thanks very much, Gary. We have our next speaker, Barb Matheson, Capilano University. And sh she's doing a uh, show us a uh, project on early childhood education. I just sign into Moodle. Uh, 
so my name is Barb Matheson, and I work at Kaplan University in the Early Childhood Education Department. And we are the newbies in terms of running online courses. So what I'm going to do today is to show you two of the courses we've got uh, running online. Um, because our goal was, when we first started out this, was how to take the students and ensure that they felt like they weren't alone. How do we build that sense of community in an online class? So we tried taking what we do in a traditional face-to-face -face class, go to the student view here, and um, duplicate it in an online class. So I'll just walk you through some of the things that we've done. Of course, there you go, it's going to load. So the first thing um, that I started with was a video introduction, which we've seen in, in other of the examples today. Um, I have this in both of my online classes, although when I show you my second one, you'll notice it's not there. Because after about the fourth week, I got tired of looking at me, so I just deleted it. Um, the other thing I've tried to do is I've made sure that I've got a, um, a webcast of me walking through the course document, the course outline for the students, to ensure that they can actually hear and see the document just as I would in an online, I mean in a face-to-face -face class. Hello. There should be a little play button there. But there isn't. So we'll pretend there is. And when you click the play, uh, you'll just see the uh, course outline. And as we walk through the course outline, I'm talking about it to the students. Then uh, the students were talking about in their presentation about please make those forums uh, not optional. So not only are they not optional, I have a rubric for how they're going to be marked so the uh, students know. The other thing I wanted to show you was I embedded Google Translate into the course. Now I understand Moodle already has a translating uh, program, but this one I thought was a little bit more effective because it quite literally changes everything on the page into whatever language you would like. And then you can flip it back into English. And in our department, particularly for this course, it's a first year course that the government decided you only needed this course in order to get an assistance license. So I have a lot of people taking this course that are, have not been to school for many, many years. Um, and a lot of people who are new to the country and are wanting to do this to get a job. So um, supporting people that had English as a second language was important. The other thing that um, I, I really felt was critical in the online classes was to have some kind of an interactive lecture where I'm able to present my information, but just as I would in a face-to-face, -face, I could stop and say, I need your comments here. Please ask your questions here. And so for that, we've used VoiceThread. Any of you familiar with VoiceThread? Oh, it's awesome for online learning. Um, so with VoiceThread, you can upload your PowerPoint or your PDF file or just uh, visuals, and then you speak to each slide. The students in the course are asked to get a free account with VoiceThread, and that allows them to leave comments on as many VoiceThreads as they want. It also allows them to create three VoiceThreads. So the first time we did this, I had as one of the assignments, the students had to create their own voice thread about a major theorist in child development. I don't know that I'd do that again in a first year course, um, because the technology was really frustrating for some of them. Uh, but at a third year level, where they're used to doing things online, they're used to technology, I might go back to it. So this is an introductory activity that I created for them using a voice thread. So I'll just show you this one quickly. Hi, everybody. We're going to make a progressive story here, and the object of the lesson basically is to learn how to use VoiceThread. So here's what you're going to do. Um, on these slides, you're going to see a picture. And um, what you're going to do is you're just going to click comment, and you're going to start our story. So if you're the first person to get here, you're going to click the arrow on the bottom here that faces to the right. You're going to click it. It'll take you to the next picture. On that picture, all you have to do is um, click record and start a story for us. Spend one minute just creating a story. Whatever you say in that minute has to somehow include the picture. Then you just hit save. If you're the second person coming along, you're going to list and we carry on. So then each of the next slides has the pictures that they had to incorporate into their story. So the students simply sign in and start talking. Hear what Zoe has to say here. One spring day, 
beautiful butterfly went to the forest. The whole point of this particular voice thread was just to get the students familiar with voice thread. Um, these are also this exact same slideshow shows up two classes later, and I use it to talk about the domains of development. So I'm actually using these pictures to speak to uh, course content. Now, the reason I like voice thread is because the students can leave their voice, um, and I ask that they leave their voice as opposed to a text comment. So when you hit uh, comment there, you can see your options. You can record just using your uh, recording device on your computer. You can create a video, which, by the way, none of the students decided to do. Uh, or you can phone in your comment. And I had one student this term who phoned in all of her comments. Um, so when you click that, it gives you a phone number. You call it, and you tell your comment, and it miraculously shows up on the exact slide you were on. It is very cool. Um, VoiceThread for the students was free for me because I wanted to do a, a lot of VoiceThreads. I bought a pro account, so I think it was $60 for the year, and that allowed me to make as many VoiceThreads as I wanted. So VoiceThreads became um, something that we did almost every week. It was how I introduced the subject matter for the week. And on various slides, I would stop and ask them to leave comments, and we could see them all. Um, the other thing, I just flipped past something, is when the students would use their forums each week, there was a forum that they had to take part in. They had to first respond to the readings or the videos or whatever the content was that week. And then they had to go back and comment on somebody else's post. So at the end of the week when I would go through and read all of that, the students and myself, we've done a lot of reading by that point. So what I was wanting to do was give feedback to them, but I did not want to have to have them read more content. So my feedback was often in an audio boo. Um, this one, actually, I used to tell them what they were going to do this week. Come on. It's funny how each computer is different speeds. We'll turn that off. Um, but on here there's various audio boos of me giving the feedback on what I had noticed in their forum that week. Let me see. If I flip back over to my third year course, again it's an advanced child development course. Um, this is the video introduction is gone off this one because as I said I was a little tired of looking at myself. Uh, in the first week I used VoiceThread as an introductory forum so that they could get to know a little bit about each other. I would not do that again in this format because I had 30 students all signing on to the first page and leaving a little bit about themselves. I think the next time I did this, I would probably have six pages where I had a different uh, picture of a nature scene or a different kind of coffee mug, and I would ask them to try to pick which picture best depicted them and explain why. Um, that might work a little bit better so that it could flip through several pages as opposed to listening to all 30 on one. The other thing we tried doing was to incorporate icebreakers and get to know you activities almost every second week in the online courses in order to build that sense of community so that the students knew who they were working with. Sometimes it was as easy as just setting up a poll to tell us about your favorite snack food um, other, other times it was very related to what we were talking about. Um, so if we were talking about looking at Cirrus, we would ask them to uh, tell us a little bit about the lenses you're looking through. So where do you live? How were you raised? It, were you raised in a small town, a large city? Because it's those lenses that uh, is going to be how you look at life. So often the get to know you activities were directly tied to course content. The feedback we got from students around this was that I had several students say they actually felt more connected to each other in this online class than they did in face-to-face -face classes, which was really surprising because I had been at conferences where they told me quite explicitly, if you're working with adult learners, do not expect them to do icebreakers or get to know you activities online. And I really felt deeply in the opposite. I, I really felt it was important that they get to know each other a little bit. So I tell the students right up front in one of the introductory pieces, uh, please know this will be part of what we're doing and this is why I'm doing it. I want to build community in this course. 
The other things I wanted to show you was um, there's a, a Vaki of, of uh, me giving feedback, just a different way to provide feedback for them. Um, let me go down to the stuff that the students can't see. Oh, first, t book chats. This was new this semester. I decided let's try a book chat. So every fourth week, they had a book that they had been reading the whole semester long. And every fourth week, they got together for one hour in real time and did a chat online. Um, so what did it look like for them? See this session. This is the session after it got underway. And I made it clear the first five minutes, just introduce yourselves and then talk about the highlights of the, the part you read this week. The feedback I got from the students was, please, Barb, don't ever put us in book chats with more than three people again. Um, and I hadn't thought of that. I'd put them in groups of four and five. And they were frustrated because they had to type so quickly to try to get in amongst five people. So three worked much better. The other thing I had to remove was on the rubric for their book chats was spelling and grammar. We very quickly removed that because they're typing so madly to try to be part of the chat. That had to leave. Uh, and if I scoot that now down to the bottom, do things we did in the past. We used wikis uh, to try to get the students to work on documents that they could then look at after this class was down. Um, so we all worked together on various pages on wikis. We did the same thing with Google, Google Documents. And the other thing we did was we asked students to, this is all hidden from last term, um, instead of doing term papers, they created blogs because we wanted them to educate the world instead of just educating me about their knowledge. And the blogs went over really well, especially when this term, one of the classes was a literacy class, and they created a blog uh, informing the world about multiple ways to present stories. And we probably have 150 stories on that blog now and multiple ways to present it. And last week, one of the authors of those children's books actually commented on the blog. And that was huge for the students to see that, wow, people are actually reading this. Um, so we call it educating the world. So I would absolutely recommend using blogs as assignments instead of class papers. And that is a warp speed tour of two of the classes that we've put online on Moodle. Questions? Yes? I need to repeat it first. Mm -hmm. um, so the question was, you're incorporating a lot of technologies, a lot of tools in here. How do you know about the tools? How are you find? You mean how you're finding out about them? Hmm. Are you are you experimenting, or Am are I you someone helping you? Meet Barb, the experimenter. Um, <laughs> the honest story. I'm also a grade one teacher, and my grade one class we have blogs, and I have a grade one class blog. So I learned a lot with the kids. I had to make it simple for the kids. I started following other people's blogs who I thought were really good. And it was through those blogs that I learned about VoiceThread. I learned about AudioBoo. I looked at however they were presenting comment and oft, uh, content, rather. And often, I mean, this says right on it, powered by VoiceThread. And I'm like, what is VoiceThread? So I would Google it, and it was a mining expedition. It took me one summer. That was my goal that summer was to become uh, literate in as many things as I could for this kind of learning. Yes. So the question is, are you the exception at your university or are you the norm? Um, I don't know. In my department, um, I was the new kid on the block, so because they knew I was comfortable with technology, I became the online convener. So in our department, um, we've, this is only our fourth term of running online classes, and they are starting to look nearly all similar to this. We're all using VoiceThread, and as I learn something new, I'm madly trying to get it out to the faculty. Thank you. There's time for one more question if we need. Online. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, Krista had one.